Chapman, you're listening to These Changing Times Radio at These Changing Times, T I M E Z Radio dot Ning dot com. We are a listener supported radio station where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www dot These Changing Times, T I M E Z dot Ning dot com and click on our support buttons. Tonight we're going to start out with um, Revelation 18. Babylon is falling. Revelation 18, 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for, for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls, and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and thy e'en wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and bre beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. And the fruit that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast their dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, the great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. Of course, this is a public law with Bo and Tammy here every Friday night, 10 to midnight Eastern Standard Time on these Changing Times Radio. How are you both? Dressed up in a suit and a tie. <laughs> yes, I got my suit and my tie on here just so I can look good tonight for the radio show. Absolutely. I've got the most absolutely, um, I mean, they always told me I had a face radio. Oh. So what's going on, Revelation? Yes, in one hour. In one hour. Very nice. How about we start in uh, in Diana? Executive charged with insider trading ahead of eBay acquisition. This is from CNBC.com. U.S. regulators have charged a former executive with insider trading for tipping family and friends in advance of eBay's purchase of the e-commerce company where he worked about the pending acquisition. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission said the former executive, Christopher Saridakis, who had led the Marketing Solutions Division of GSI Commerce, was also criminally charged by federal prosecutors in Pennsylvania. Saridakis agreed to pay $664,822 FRN and accept an officer and director ban to settle the SEC charges, the regulators said. Separately, the SEC said five people who allegedly traded on tips about GSI agreed to pay more than 490,000 FRNs to settle related charges. It also said it entered a non-prosecution agreement with an unnamed individual who provided, quote, extraordinary cooperation, end quote, in the investigation. It's first such agreement with an individual. Who they're shaking them down. It's not Indiana, though. That's, uh. Oops. But it don't matter. Uh, eBay's global. Absolutely. Right. And. Oh, I had the wrong uh, location. Wow. Sorry about I that. I gave folks. you a story from Indiana, but. Yes. So. 
Yeah, go on. You, you, you it's just, it's on just that. pretty profound that, uh, you know, to avoid charges, they paid out half a million dollars to, uh, quote, law enforcement, or is that the mafia? Because, you know, I can palm a person in the mafia and, you know, avoid having my kneecaps busted. How is it possible that there's such a thing as law if you've got, uh, corporate security guards there enforcing whatever that is, shaking people down. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, well, it's time, isn't it? Because uh, they're working out that agreed entry, whether they want to acknowledge it directly with us or not. Uh, you can see it, can't you? Revelation 18, perhaps. I mean, uh... It's the hardest thing I get guess in this new court is you've got to divest yourself of these old ideas and concepts about how the court works as we plow through getting stuff stricken off the record uh, every, every step we went you know and all stuff that they can't strike off the record doing everything they can't judges acting like attorneys attorneys acting like executors well, they can't have their insurance seeing that stuff my goodness they're not covered for acts of war or civil war risks it's okay we saved everything right and we evidence this yeah we didn't strike anything that they struck off the record obviously no no i want to get paid for everything that they've done upon mankind everything so no striking we leave all those words on there because uh a bankrupt corporation can't even profit off of its thesaurus or any other concept yeah it's, <laughs> yeah you hit it on the head right there it's like bankruptcy uh uh trustee over their own bankruptcy thank you mr james trafficant uh and uh, it's as crazy as a soup sandwich. And so what so many patriots don't realize out there, and this, I, I guess you should consider it any country that you believe you live in since the Atlantic Charter of 1941, which is all done under that bankruptcy as well. Um, Congress was given world dominion. So what you think is a government is a bankrupt depraved corporation that you're being patriotic to so there's no wonder that they have the police state ramping it up nsa spying on you everywhere 75 year old grandmothers getting zip tied uh, on squat raids because they got the wrong address they're you know, really call nine one one. We'll come out and shoot your dog. They're really trying to get that money in there since they lost their funding, and well, we can see this. I mean, it's really ramping up. But here's the one from uh, Indiana from the IndyChannel.com. Former GIPC director accused of embezzlement. This guy's a bigwig down there in Indianapolis. He's part of the strategy and development team. Uh, Indianapolis police are investigating the former director of the Greater Indianapolis Progress Committee for allegedly embezzling between 90000 and 100000 over a three-year period. Matthew Hendricks was fired by GIPC on March 5th. On Thursday morning, officers with the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department served search warrants at Hendricks' Lebanon home and at the home of his former girlfriend, Jennifer Armstrong. That's going to make her love him even more, you know, because, you know... <laughs> Females really like being shaken down uh, on behalf of their ex-boyfriends. That's a common tactic. <laughs> Eve's going to squeal on you, honey. Investigators believe Hendricks and Armstrong funneled money from GIPC into a bogus home health care company. Police also said Hendricks was caught paying for a $5,000 FRN cruise with his company credit card. At that time, Hendricks told his superiors it was accidental. Or we accidentally used the credit card. He must have slipped and fell or something of that nature. 
Investigators said Hendricks received a $17,000 severance check when he was fired by GIPC. GIPC is a nonprofit public private partnership. It contributes talent and expertise and has been instrumental in helping Indianapolis develop its reputation as a first class sports town. Of course, these are the monkeys pushing buttons according to the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars and it's called Business Intelligence. He's the director of the little Silent Weapon and putting in that input in order for it to spit out some output that the corporate council acts on and attacks human beings for. So, backing out just a little bit, holster sniffers beware. It's just sad. I mean, they're really, really rolling on each other and bondsmen and all these things and it looks like revelation out there. Did you see the, did you have one up? Um, also on the Indie Channel, uh, the uh, Indianapolis, a former teacher, Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired was sentenced after pleading guilty to a charge of sexual misconduct with a minor after allegedly having sex with a student. Oh. Alavida, 61, was sentenced to a total of six years two years in the Indiana Department of Corrections and four years of probation Friday morning today so this is hot off the press wow they got him in uh, probate there and his estate's pretty much done for isn't it doesn't look good no I think sometimes it's better to be beaten to death than put on probation or institutionalized from NBCConnecticut.com, bail bond agent charged with murder in West Hartford. Bail bond agent accused of shooting her boyfriend in the car as he was driving on Prospect Avenue near the Hartford West Hartford line has been charged with murder. Police found Jose Mendez, 23, of Hartford after a crash near Prospect Avenue and Kane Street around 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday. The car went through a fence on the Prospect Avenue side of the property at 27 Park Road. Police said they received several 911 calls, including one from a woman who was upset and crying. Quote, my name is Angela and I just shot someone on Prospect Avenue, end quote, she said, according to court documents. She was heard screaming and had been crying before hanging up. Mendez had been shot in the head, according to police, and he was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Angela Grasso Cuna, 27, of Plain, Plainsville, a surety bail bond agent with Capital Bail Bonds in Hartford, is accused of pulling the trigger, according to West Hartford Police. She was originally charged. Uh, it doesn't finish that sentence. Sorry, folks. A uh, representative of the company confirmed that Grasso Cuna works there, but had no further comment. Grasso Cuna's defense team said in court that she was acting in self-defense. According to court paperwork, Grasso Kuna told police that Mendez kidnapped her and she shot him in self-defense. She waived her Miranda rights after speaking with her attorney for several minutes, according to court documents, and spoke with West Hartford police officers for more than five hours after the shooting. Grasso Kuna told police she ran into Mendez at a bar in Hartford three weeks earlier after not having seen him since they were teenagers and they started dating, according to police. On April 8th, Mendez took Grasso Kuna to see his sister and then accused her of flirting with his sibling. Back in the car, they argued, and Mendez threw her phone out the window, she told police. On April 9th, Mendez accused Grasso Kuna of cheating and told her she had to give him $600 or he would kill her and her family, according to court documents. Grasso Kuna told police she tried to get the money by catching a check, but the bank was closed. Isn't that a convenient story? Um... Let's see. At that point, Mendez also accused her of cheating and giving him a sexually transmitted disease. He grabbed the back of her head, slammed it into the center console, and spit on her, she told police. He also brought her to a clinic in Bruceville to get tested for sexually transmitted diseases and said he killed her and her children if she ran. Gresso Kuna told police. Yeah, that sounds like a plausible story. He was probably pissed off. 
By the time they got there, the clinic was closed for the day. So they drove back to Hartford and Mendes threatened to kill Grasso Kuna's family and make her watch, she told police. Aren't these stories just so interesting? Bank was closed, clinic was closed, but she says all of these threats. It's all just heresy against him. You know, I'm sorry there's no evidence because the bank was closed. I'm sorry there's no evidence because the clinic was closed. Now, all of these things are just interesting, and that's likely the reason that she's charged with murder and not like manslaughter. Sorry, the cops aren't believing it either, honey. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds like a uh, real winner there. Absolutely. Sexy. Uh, of course, we had that explosion in a small town of Washington in uh, North Bend. Uh, let's see. Big explosion and fire destroyed three buildings. It was a strip mall. Luckily, it happened like in the middle of the night, like 3.45 a.m. And nobody was harmed in the deal. Uh, but uh, damaged, um, you know, set debris flying for blocks. Jolted people awake. And let's see, uh, let's see, so a few people were in their business district offices and such. Uh, it's about 30 miles east of Seattle. We were very, very fortunate that it happened in early morning. It was two hours later, the street would have been very busy, said Josie Williams, public information officer for East Side Fire and Rescue. Uh, Let's see here, a couple minor injuries, so that was fortunate, but let's see here, what was the kicker on this story here, I'm reading. Uh, oh, it's funny, know. they said that uh, it's under investigation, but they don't know when they'll get the results of the investigation, and then later on in the story, they said, well, it might have been a, a contractor for the gas company, and nobody knew that they were there, and that's what exploded, and then they gave the the usual spiel, you know, call 911 if you smell gas. So that, that just indicates that it's guarantee insurance and they're raising it to the ground so that they can develop it. Right, right. And they, this time, I mean, uh, for whatever reason, they didn't, they didn't want to take the chance of, of killing anybody during this procedure of, you know, facilitating guarantee insurance. Right. They did the same thing in Ohio this last week as well. Same thing. Yeah, so this whole thing about um, the bankrupt, depraved state, these corporate council attorneys facilitating the stuff, you know, the uh, basic idea is that they can't industrialize unless they burn something to the ground first. And it's a means of, of garnering money. So they're trying to make these claims on the insurance because they don't have any federal drawing right or special drawing rights and they don't have any... Uh, treasury rights and no Federal Reserve rights coming in and so there's nothing left unless they burn stuff to the ground and try to claim it on the insurance as normal day-to-day -day business and they're learning really quickly that the only way that they can make money is to take each other into the chute and that's why you're seeing that ramp up and all of these test models here and there and and um, things exploding without cause and uh, hillsides collapsing on whole cities and killing people. This is a means of them garnering monies that they don't have any longer. That's what Revelation looks like. If When you read Revelation, it explains all of these things. You know, things collapse, earthquakes all over, explosions, all sorts of stuff. And this is, you're watching it. Yeah, the other incident you're talking about is in Dayton, right. Ohio. Right. And they shut off the comment feature because we had been commenting, and there was others in that neighborhood um, that said, "You know what? I've lived there for like ten years, and I always smell gas." And and one of them was actually a plumber, and he said, "Look, I'm a, I'm a plumber, and blah blah blah. The house was empty." And uh, how did this occur? You know, the gas was left on for a year with nobody in it. And then the owner lived next door. The owner's 89. So they, they were intending on raising this elderly man 
by you know exploding his house and his house was so damaged that he's he's got to now get rid of the debris which is really costly when you look at these things and that's how they're getting their funding because you know who owns the the corporations well the local developers contractors who maintains these hedge funds the contractors and developers are the ones betting on these things that's what their um, bids are their bids are bets and the corporation comes in and it says in the newspaper public notice such and such uh, we want bids for this amount and this amount start your bidding that's a hedge on a on a bet yeah this comment says bull I live there uh, on Kramer for 10 years you'd always smell gas over there and no matter how many times it was reported it was said nothing was wrong and apparently people are getting it because Right. She got like, you know, nine thumbs up or whatever on her comment. Right. And then the comments are suddenly stopped. They stop us from commenting. Mm -hmm. and, and right. This from four days ago is the last comment. Right. Uh, I know there's They couple. can't have any other people agreeing. <laughs> it might set in, in place wrath when you realize what their book is, right? Yeah, right, see, so, yeah, the owner of the property, 89-year-old Daniel Brown. Yeah, this is a real nice, they do this to 89-year-olds. Right, preying on the elderly. This is what the corporation does. This is how they love you. Uh, told 2 News that he had expressed concern to the city about lines and leaks in the area. Cause he, yeah, right, because he smelled the gas, too, all the time. Right. But don't worry, they won't blow it up until they're ready here, Mr. Brown. We need that funding, guarantee insurance. We'll, um, you know, we'll uh, go ahead and pull a trigger then. Yeah. Let's see here. So, yeah, it was in Dayton, Ohio. So, Seattle and Dayton here recently. Uh,. Yeah, so guarantee insurance. Go see the uh, documentary and guarantee insurance if you don't get it. Now, there was uh, a couple articles about psychiatrists, you know, coming in here. Uh, of course, the government using their psychiatrists to basically posture for what's going to happen next. Uh, and I know this is natural news. I know how you feel about natural news, but um, psychiatrists now say nonconformity is a mental illness. Only sheeple are sane. Yeah, absolutely. That's what Hitler said too. Yep, um, it's the same old Nazi plot over and over again, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, modern psychiatry has become a hotbed of corruption, particularly the kind. That seeks to demonize and declare mentally ill anyone who de deviates from what is regarded as the norm. This is abundantly evident in the latest installment of the industry's diagnostic, diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders, or DSM, which dubs people who do not conform to those in charge declare to be normal as mentally insane. Right, and you should see what else is in the DSM-5 this last go-round. 2013, it came out. Um, you know, it never, ever applies anymore to histrionic behavior, which, of course, is Eve shaking her tail all the time. But when you get into the avoidant disorders, shyness, um, anxiety, they have blushing as a sign of avoidant disorder now. That means that it's much, much, much easier to kidnap children entering into preschool and kindergarten based on the quote sign and symptoms of blushing maintaining that that child must be abused under the avoidant personality disorder and every sheeple needs to hear me this time because you're teaching your children stranger danger they're watching the news all the time they're watching television programming all the time they're being taught to be naked by the television programming. 
It's telling them they're not pretty enough, they're not good enough, they're not smart enough, they're not tall enough, they're not black enough, they're not white enough. And all in all, they enter into a new setting such as preschool or daycare or the uh, kindergarten setting. And of course they're going to be blushing because they've been already taught that they're naked through television programming. So they're going to be shy. And the DSM allows legal kidnapping through child protection in that manner. A very, very efficient tool of psychiatry. Yeah, this ain't no fooling around. This is life during wartime. Another one on psychiatry here from 12160-INFO. American Psychiatry classifies new mental illness disorders. And you can bet you have one. American Psychiatry Association. Ugh, I give you the creeps to read that. This is the sound of that. American Psychiatry Association. Of course, we know, you know, they're, uh... <laughs> they were right in the case along with everybody else. Any yeah. associate of the United States Incorporated or the United Nations is already under seizure. Their funding's gone, and they need to pick people off the street now that will consent and say, yes, yes, I saw on TV yesterday that I have this disorder and I want this drug. And that's all it takes. The Red Cross hospital settings, those are places for prisoners of war to be s stored since the 1864 Geneva Convention. So, it says uh, going on that American Psychiatric, uh, Psychiatric Association has classified new mental health disorders for the drug companies to profit from the sale of their harmful and sometimes fatal pharmaceuticals to the American public. And you could probably apply this more globally than just uh, continental United States as it's called. Uh, but here's a partial list. Social Pragmatic Communication Disorder, Disruptive Move Dysregulation Disorder, Premenstrual dys uh, Dysphoric Disorder, Hoarding Disorder, Reminds me of that South Park episode. Mm -hmm. well, well, I'm not. Who, what's a hoarder? See, caffeine withdrawal, cannabis withdrawal. There you go, everybody. Extra, everybody. Yeah, really. What are the stats? Last I read, like 80 or 85 percent of the people like at least try marijuana. And well, on caffeine, you have the two two sides, so that that includes everybody. Yet they want they want it illegal because. Uh, it doesn't matter that everybody uh, doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't matter that nobody else wants it illegal. Your quote unquote elected representatives will be your administrators, executors, and they'll tell you what you want. But that's the funniest part is that they're going towards a uh, diagnosis of uh, marijuana being addictive now. If there's a withdrawal yeah. disorder, then that means there's an addiction. Why well, I, I guarantee there's more of a threat from cops enforcing commercial crimes on 27 CFR 72.11 and being killed by one of these pharmaceuticals from one of the drug companies than dying of marijuana. Absolutely. But uh, let's see. Of course, that's just my opinion. Um, Exhortation, skin picking disorder. No, well, if you scratch, you might be, you're probably uh, diagnosed. You know, yeah. binge eating disorder, rapid eye movement, sleep behavior disorder. What about those guys who eat a bunch of hot dogs all the time? Are they going to be psychiatrically <laughs> evaluated at the fair now? They'll have a psychiatrist on hand, everybody. Don't worry, nothing to fear. Of course. Yeah. Restless leg syndrome, major. Neurocognitive disorder with Lewy body disease and mild neurocognitive disorder. Disinhibited social engagement disorder. God. Central sleep apnea and sleep related hypoventilation. Oh my gosh, a breathing disorder. That is breathing related. Oh man, if you're breathing, you probably got a psychiatric disorder. We better oh, get you some pharmaceuticals man. to help you out. I hope, I hope, I pray to God that people don't play into this one. If they see it on TV, don't be diagnosed with those things. This is sick. 
Why are you letting anybody diagnose you for anything? This is sick. That is so sad. Yeah. So, I got uh, the Mooresville Tribune story. says, former nursing director facing drug charges. Former emergency room nursing director at an... Iredell Hospital was arrested Saturday on more than two dozen charges of forging prescription prescriptions for, for painkillers. Jeffrey Clint Hall, 43 of Flanders Drive, Mooresville, was charged with a total of 25 counts, each of obtaining controlled substances by fraud, forgery, and trafficking in heroin opium. Aww. His bond was set at $100,000. Wow. Statesville Police Officer Captain David Only, Supervisor of the Narcotics Division, said the investigation was launched in late January when a Mooresville pharmacy contacted Davis Regional Medical Center about the validity of a prescription. The trigger. Saddle weapons. It's time to take this guy in. Man, this cannibalism is sad. He looks young. 43. Uh... Mooresville Police Department was contacted because the pharmacy was in Mooresville and the SPD was contacted by Davis due to the hospital being in the SPD's jurisdiction. So they didn't say that the pharmacy is an informant there? They just kind of smoothed all that over and said all these reports were made. That's a good sneaky tactic. Yeah. You we, might not want to go they... to the pharmacy, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, they're all tied to the federal state articles of uh, incorporation. Sad. During the course of the three-month investigation, he said investigators learned that Hall, who was the nursing director in the emergency room at Davis prior to January, was filling prescriptions at pharmacies in Statesville and signing the name of an emergency room physician at Davis. They do that all the time. They put one person into, on duty. And then all the minions run around with the little stamper, just like the sheriff's department. Yeah. That's sad. They use him as a fall guy. Oh, everybody needs to get out of that kind of employment. That's sad. They're, they're just catching fall guys without cause now. Only said the prescriptions were only for hydrocodone, a painkiller. He said the prescriptions were filed at local pharmacies. Yada 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 is buying a set of a hundred thousand bucks. That's what people do in the emergency room. It, people go in there for emergencies. So in an emergency, they rush over to the pharmacy, hand in the little stamper pad, get their prescription for the person who needs them, and that's his function up until he got cannibalized. That's sad. People are mean. This guy, there's, there's a psychopath out in California that, I mean, this is just absolutely bottom of the barrel here, folks. San Francisco.cbslocal.com. Sonoma County supervisor accused of peeking at neighbor testified sex was his goal. I mean, this is one of the craziest stories I've read recently. Santa Rosa, a Sonoma County supervisor charged with peeking into a neighbor's apartment in the middle of the night, clad only in boxer shorts, testified that it was his hope to have sex with the woman. Supervisor Efren Carrillo, Carrillo took the stand Thursday to defend himself against a misdemeanor charge that could land him in jail up to six months. Carrillo, 33, admitted entering the private courtyard of the woman's apartment knocking on her sliding glass door, then pushing through her open bedroom window, tearing out the screen. He said he then knocked repeatedly at her <laughs> front door. He tore out her screen. Uh. Right. He, th he said he then knocked repeatedly at her front door until he heard what he thought was a man's voice. Police arrested him several blocks away. On cross-examination, Carrillo denied looking into the victim's home. The woman, identified only as Jane Doe, testified that Carrillo's behavior the night of July 13th terrified her and her two female house guests so much that they grabbed knives from the kitchen to defend themselves. In his statement, oops, in his statement to police after their arrest, played in court on Tuesday, Carrillo said that he had been drinking at a nightclub and thought that 
the woman whom he had met several months earlier would be receptive to sharing an early morning drink crazy in testimony on Thursday he acknowledged ha having no prior relationship with the woman and that the idea to go to her house for sex surfaced after his girlfriend dropped him off at home and he noticed the woman's lights were on yeah shoot that that, that don't even work out so good when you're married usually <laughs> God, he's just <laughs> crazy this Korea testified that he had been drinking and his ego made him believe that women wanted him before the trial started, he said he would seek treatment for a problem with binge drinking. The two-term supervisor was once seen as a rising star in the local Democratic Party. This guy just figured, well, I have a penis. Might as well use it somewhere. They're going to want me. I know they want me. That is just so And yeah, what is his position? Supervisor of what? Uh, looks like the Sonoma County Supervisor, yeah. The Sonoma so, County what's that mean? Supervisor. State Attorney? Yeah, he would be on corporate counsel. Okay. And that, that's just funny how he got cannibalized with crap. He just admitted everything. But again, he's only facing six months, everybody, so don't let him sit on any boards after that. Might not want to patronize him. He likes sex so much that he just thought that his neighbor would be receptive to him. That's pretty psychopathic. No wonder if he asks his girlfriend to come bail him out. It's just sick. Sick. I can't believe this. So these, so corporate counsel attorneys will have, you know, different titles on the board. Like you got a conservator and a supervisor and right. such. Administrator, county administrator is one. Um, supervisor oversees things, kind of like a magistrate, but with a lesser title. You know, this guy looks too young to be a... Usually all these corporate counsel attorneys are all codgered up. Um, How old is Seward? He was young. Um, he's like mid-50s, I think. Aw, he's eh, still young. Yeah, so, okay, well, that's good to know that there's, with these, with these titles, me, when you're reading county supervisor, that you're talking about corporate counsel, I say corporate counsel all the time, but your, your local county would call them different things, right, what do we got, uh, uh, well, what are some different ones, I can't think right now, but I know I've seen a lot of them, uh, Guardian ad litem is one of the names. Um, I mean, there's just so many. Board of directors. Right, and board of commissioners. The commission commissions various states, but commissions are commissioned under the 1802 Indemnification Convention. So those commissioners are out commissioning whatever happens around the county, commissioning law enforcement, commissioning fire, commissioning uh, development, and then you've got corporate counsel that's there as a backbone to that corporation, that bankrupt corporation, and that's the one that's tricking everybody out. And then you have the planning and development. You've got sometimes it's called strategy and development. It, it depends on uh, the regionality. Now there's regional directors, and then there's county directors. The regional director is a director under the, uh, of the county. And then you have the main board of directors, which would be at the federal level. And you have a lower class board of directors, county commission, blah, blah, blah. So it just, it follows the, the same corporate structure as any other corporation. Yeah. Yep, right. And just like the United States of America, um... Congress, whatever you want to call it, they didn't. They didn't start being a corporation in 1871. No, no. It goes back to the 1802. And the well, now Articles of Confederation are an article of uh, incorporation, right there. Well, the Constitution is an incorporated document. Right. Well, Articles of Confederation, Articles of confederation was first. Right. Declaration of Independence, same thing, isn't it? Right, and it declared everybody dead. So that's what named the product in that corporation. The Declaration of Independence is like, um, okay, everybody, we're going to be Barbie now. And then you'll have an, a Declaration of Independence that says, okay, everybody, we're going to play G.I. Joe. You know, it's just a product of that corporation, and it says what that product is and what the product's rights are. 
which is, of course, the Bill of Rights. Which is saying, basically, oh, we took these rights from you here, we'll grant them back to you. If at, you pay at, me. At a price. If you pay me, because the Bill of Rights is charging your estates for giving you those rights. And the sheeple said, woohoo! Yay, I don't get my inheritance, I can be an beneficiary. No, they, they didn't, they didn't <laughs> publicize that part of it, though. He, Neglected to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And then they said that you went away from England rather than being seceded by Congress. From the record online.com, Monticello, a resident counselor at a local group home was arrested Wednesday and charged with having sex with a free female resident in his care, state officials announced Wednesday. Michael Cubero, 36, of Monticello, who works for the Orange Sullivan Division of Rehabilitation Support Services, is being charged with felon seven felony counts, including three of third-degree rape. The allegations were first reported to the New York State Justice Center for the Protection of People with Special Needs hotline. Justice Center investigators and village and state police looked into it and say Cabrera had sex with the resident from August through December 2013. Cabrera has been terminated from his job, authorities said. So there goes another counselor, psychiatrist that preys on, on the weak and, and helpless, thankfully. I hope they raise his estate very well. Well, apparently people are getting something because uh, oh, we had Michelle Obama who was snubbed at that graduation speech at uh, some school due to a petition. But... But notice how much more they have to work to sell their agenda. I mean, here you have Barack Obama has been on Letterman, I don't know how many times in the Tonight Show, and, you know, goes on that gay girl show all the time, um, Ellen or something. And, I mean, they're just everywhere. Michelle Obama, too, is in something recently. It's just it's, funny. They're uh, having to advertise. They, that, that's they got, so good. I mean, a lot. I mean, what, what, you know, even if the system worked like you were taught in school, uh, which it doesn't, but if it worked like that, when would the president have time to go and, and do these sort of things all the time? When he's an actor and a mouthpiece for Congress. I mean, he's got to, you know, he's got to fly from Washington to California all the time for these TV shows. Uh, man, I mean, yeah, Obama was even on that Between Two Ferns. Remember that, that guy from... Uh, oh, yeah, the comedian. The guy from uh, Hangover series of movies. Yeah, that's Between funny. Two Ferns. And he, yeah, and he played like uh, just a, Obama was just being a comedian. Right. Trying to make himself a likable guy, or, well, they, the uh, Broadcasting Board of Governors, got him you know, the best set up here to look like the, uh, you know, average Joe kind of guy. You know, oh, you gotta like him. He just told a good joke. I want to see him hawking, like, cleaner supplies and stuff, like those <laughs> pits <pitch> men. <laughs> From the lacrossetribune.com, Wakisha doctor charged at police state. This one, I want you to, oh my gosh, it made me laugh so hard. Wakisha, Wisconsin, a Wakisha doctor is charged with attacking her estranged husband and leading police on a chase before she was shocked with a stun gun and arrested. A criminal complaint says the 49-year-old Jan Donier violated a court order to stay away from the family's town of Delafield residence Monday night and struck her husband. She denied vandalizing his truck. The complaint says she drove by a squad, a squad car with her lights off and officers gave chase. Authorities say she drove 60 miles per hour toward a police blockage and forced officers to run to safety. Dornier was eventually arrested at the County Springs Hotel where officers say she refused their commands so they used a stun gun to take her into custody. The Waukesha Freeman says Dornier is being held on $50,000 cash bail. So there's another 
psychopathic female bigwig here, and uh, she just got a taste of civilian life as a citizen. Oh. Well. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know what to say about that. Uh. Well, they've been running around with title for a very, very long time, and, and uh, these little doctors, they don't experience such uh, behavior unbecoming of her entitlement, so it kind of probably shocked her quite well. There's another one. In well, it kind of reminds me, it, you know, it kind of thinks, uh, I kind of think back on the, comes to mind recently that uh, Ice Burner, I think it was the movie, and, um, you know, when the people from the back, they finally, you know, start getting access to the upper cabins, and they kidnapped one of these, uh, uh, you know, one of somebody from the administration, uh, Snowpiercer. That's what it was. Yeah, Snowpiercer. Then they kidnapped this lady from the administration. You know, and of course they've been eating like these protein bars that are made out of squished up bugs the whole time. And they get to this one car, and and she and, and she says, "Oh, you're lucky. You're in luck today." Uh, uh, we're su serving sushi today. We only serve that twice a year. And um, so they all sit down and have a little snack of the sushi. And, and they go, uh-uh, not you. And they throw her one of those bug bars. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And the uh, Waukesha doctor got a bug bar. I like that. The um, From the New York Daily News dot com. Uh, oh, did you see this one? Drunken Brooklyn cop accidentally shoots partner in his wrist. Oh, no, my goodness. Or it, was, it was so beautiful. So they got a two-for-one special. A veteran NYPD detective was charged with driving while intoxicated after he accidentally shot his partner in the wrist during a game of drunken firearms show and tell early Thursday, cop sources said. Detective Jay Poggi, a 31-year veteran, and his partner, Matthew Sullivan, had signed out of the 75th Precinct Station House in East New York, Brooklyn, saying they were headed to Far Rockaway on a robbery investigation. The sources said during their travels, they went to a restaurant and a second establishment that serves alcohol, according to sources. So here they are. They're investigating a robbery by checking out the local bars and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, give me another one. I'm, I, I need some more thinking energy here. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'll continue. They left their second stop in Howard Beach, Queens, between 1.30 a.m. and 1.50 a.m. Puggy's shift ended at 1 a.m., sources said. The duo got into their unmarked car with the liquored up Poggy at the wheel, and while the car was still parked, Poggy decided to show Sullivan the hammer on his gun, an old Smith & Wesson 38 caliber revolver, according to sources and prosecutors. The gun suddenly discharged, sending a round into Sullivan's right wrist, breaking a bone. Poggy, 58, drove his wounded partner to Jamaica Hospital, where Sullivan, a 12-year veteran, underwent sur surgery. A police lieutenant called to the hospital noticed that Poggy, who had said he was a driver, had bloodshot eyes and boozy breath, according to a criminal complaint. At 3.15 a.m., a field sobriety test was administered, required by the NYPD, and cases where cops fire their weapons. It showed Poggy had a blood alcohol content of .113, well above the legal driving limit of .08. Assistant District Attorney James Lander said at... Poggy's arraignment. A judge released Poggy without bail. Sullivan, who was scheduled to be on duty until 8 a.m. Thursday, was in stable condition after surgery. The shooting, first reported on the New York Daily News.com, is being probed by the Queens District Attorney's Office and the NYPD Internal Affairs Bureau. Investigators believe the partners worked on the robbery case, then left the Rockaway, sources said. Poggy, a first grade detective, was weeks away from retiring, according to one source, could now be forced to retire or face department charges. Neither he or his lawyer could be reached for comment. Isn't that interesting? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I don't hang around anybody that, like, uh, likes to twirl around guns and show them off. And when they're drunk? Even when they're sober. I mean, just, just that's stupid. I mean, it's crazy. You, uh, you certainly want to do, don't want to do that stuff when you've been drinking, but. Penis and Uh, I mean, how many times has this sort of thing gone very very south. Right. And the so cops should the know. Cops should, they're trained in gun safety at the range. They should know this stuff. Absolutely. And, and of but course... But they let their steroids or their, you know, mental status and macho-ness get the best of them every time. And that's just karma. Right. And, and remember, those aren't officers, those are detectives, they're FBI agents, so that they're going into the shoot. They're supposed to be a little more that. intelligent and perhaps mature than your regular county sheriff guys. But that's why they're so mean. It's always penis envy. These effeminate males, they toss around their guns, they punch out their chests, I'm God, I'm God, worship me, all of these things, and now they're learning. Uh, that's not the right way to be. From WEAU.com, Dunn County, Wisconsin, a former travel agent with Chippewa Falls is charged with theft after investigators say she misled a couple into paying for a trip that never happened. According to a criminal complaint filed in Dunn County Court, the couple met with 67-year-old Betty Larson at a motel in Menominee in 2010 at a travel show she was hosting. The complaint says the couple wrote Larson a check for a trip to Texas for almost $4,000, which she deposited. A few months later, the couple found that Larson was facing charges for worthless checks. The complaint says the couple tried to reach her and get a refund, but her personal and business phones had been disconnected. She just went on the run. Thanks for your business. Bye. See ya. This is sick. These psychopaths are everywhere. Oh, yeah. The, uh... Hog tied some 75 year old woman because they got the wrong apartment the other day. I think that one's probably been around on the oh. news. I got it pulled up here at the Intel Hub, but they got some stupid, crappy nonsense that's overlapping like the left part of the story. I can read most of it though, I guess. 75 year old Virginia woman says she was tied up and interrogated this week after police raided her home. According to Ruth Hunter, Virginia State Police bound her hands with zip ties after wrongfully targeting her apartment in a drug raid. Uh, I thought it was somebody just breaking in to rob and kill me, Hunter told CBS 6. Uh, let's see. Took my hands and handcuffed me with the ties because they told me I was under arrest. And then after they handcuffed me, that's when they proceeded to ask questions. Oh, that's sick. That's so sad. It's Nazi Germany all over again. Yeah, and I think, I read this from another source earlier, they went on to uh, leave her uh, hogtied there, the zip ties, while they went to the other uh, house. Oh. And came back later. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, and this is the, uh, they told Hunter that her home was listed as a major drug spot. God. According to court documents. According, like a court, you know, they always, so, you know, show their authority. According to court documents, condemned every goddamn court uh, there is out there. So these, it, it's all hot air and rubber stamps is all it is. That's all these courts are. They, I, they shouldn't even be uh, quoting their court documents for authority anymore. But I digress. So... Yeah, so so they asked me if I started any drugs for anybody, Hunter said. I said, how dare you insult my integrity? Sick. Officers then began questioning Hunter on a relationship with certain family members accusing her granddaughter God. of knowing drug dealers. So they knew who she was. They did it for terrorism. They were trying to hurt her. Yeah. Oh, corporate counsel needs to be just strung up in the middle of town square and everybody can just throw rocks at them or whatever they used to do. Yeah, so the police then suddenly stopped the interrogation. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, this, yes. Police suddenly stopped the interrogation, left Hunter handcuffed in her apartment, and made an arrest two doors down. Her fiance, the man arrested, told reporters that police undoubtedly mixed up the uh, 
Now, the fiancé of the man arrested, like I said, I got some crappy advertisement I can't get rid of, uh, told reporters that police and Dolly mixed up the apartments. Just so happened they came to apartment G and they got it mixed up with apartment. And I can't read that letter, the woman said. So they got just mixed up the numbers. And they did, because they were talking about her granddaughter. That was just a shakedown tactic. They were terrorizing an old woman. That's terrible. Corporate counsel needs to just be strung up. Sick. Yeah, yeah. This lady wants to move now because Sick. of this, but you can't run. You can't go anywhere now. It, no, it requires humanity standing up for defenseless, helpless grandmothers being attacked by corporate security guards on behalf of corporate counsel. Enough is enough already. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Over at the own, uh, their own FBI.gov website. website. Hmm. Okay. Uh, priest and parish administrator charged with stealing from Troy Church. Catholic priest and parish administrator were indicted for stealing almost $700,000 from St. Thomas More Church in Troy during an eight-year period, U.S. Attorney Barbara L. McQuaid announced today. McQuaid, McQuaid was joined uh, in the announcement by Paul M. Abate, special agent in charge of the Federal Bureau of Investigation Detroit Division. Charges uh, charged were Edward Belzac, 69, of Troy, and Janice Verschuren, 67, of Bloomfield Hills. Sick. Almost a million dollars. That must go with their vow of poverty, right? These priests vow of poverty. What's poverty if they're embezzling upwards of a million dollars? What's, what's their version of po poverty? I think they have a different definition because there was a priest going off on poor people a while back. But they take a vow of poverty when they're priests. Yeah. How how dare they? What what hypocrites? Yeah, and then we got there was that news about the Pope. Uh, I didn't see that from CNN. The uh, oh, I don't know what the the Pope um, announced a couple of previous popes uh, for super popedom status or some kind of. <laughs> Some kind of awards they grant themselves, you yeah, know. Yeah, of course. They're all members of the UN. They have been since forever. And as members of the UN, they, they have to agree to be a member of the UN. You have to agree to fund abortion. And that's one of the main, you know, besides the child sex abuse that is their function, they pay for abortion. And out the other side of their mouth, they're saying something different. Life is life. Those, that uh, entity is Satan. From the newsrecord.com, Reedsville Downtown Corporation Director charged in larceny. Now here's another corporate counsel attorney. Reedsville, the director of the Reedsville Downtown Corporation, has been charged with misdemeanor larceny. Offers, officers from the Reedsville Police Department called Teresa Earl Scoble, 59, of 105 Trayburn Drive in Reedsville to come into the police department to be served as summons, according to the police report. The report said Scoble came immediately and received a misdemeanor larceny charge. She has a court date scheduled for May 8th in the Rockingham D County District Court. Scoble didn't answer any calls for comment. That's interesting. Do you, do you feel like coming on down to the police department today, please? It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my goodness. From TampaBay.com, Pasco After School Program Administrator Arrested on Child Porn Charges. Port Ritchie, Florida. An FBI task force raided the home of a Schrader Elementary After School Program Administrator on Monday and found more than 100 compact discs filled with child pornography as well as numerous lewd pictures sent and received over electronic communications, authorities said. Kenneth Dempsey, 52, was arrested and charged with receipt 
and possession of child pornography, a federal offense, Dempsey lives with his six-year-old adopted son, according to a complaint filed with the U.S. District Court in Tampa at 9629 Moorhead Lane in Port Ritchie. A spokesman for the FBI said the agency plans to release additional information about the well-being of the child at a later date. Members of the task force found Dempsey through a photo sharing website called Shutterfly.com. According to the complaint, investigators found emails linked to a specific member group on the site. The group contained more than 17,000 images of child pornography, most depicting underage boys. From there, they found Dempsey. <clears throat> Excuse me. The complaint said he uploaded 21 images and 9 videos that showed sex acts between underage boys. Investigators traced his internet protocol address to his home. After the raid, he admitted sending and receiving child pornography from his email address as recently as April 20th. He led them to an air conditioning vent in the wall, which had to be unscrewed to access. Inside, investigators found the compact discs. Dempsey denied having committed any hands-on offenses with children, the complaint states. <clears throat> Dempsey's neighbor said that he is meticulous about his lawn and mowed it every day. All of them described him as odd. Many said he would get up at 6.30 every morning, come outside, and do a parameter check, driving around and staring down the roads in between the houses and others. He had a wife, and his wife left, Nick Marrero, 26, a neighbor across the street said, quote, he was OCD as hell, end quote. Dempsey was not friendly and would never wave when waved at, Marino said. Another neighbor, Brenda Pippi, said Dempsey was just weird all around. She said he's lived in the neighborhood for at least five years and that he used to live with a woman and two kids, but they left suddenly one day. He kept to himself. Quote, you hear stories on TV about this kind of thing, and you think, why didn't the neighbors do anything, end quote. But she said, quote, but you can see why. He was squeaky clean, end quote. No, he had a title, and you dumbasses believe that he's safe around your children, but that's his function. And I'll continue reading. Pippi said she never witnessed any abuse or yelling with the young boy when the two were outside working on the lawn. Dempsey does not have a criminal record in Florida. Now, isn't that interesting that they would maintain that? He doesn't have a criminal record in Florida. When they don't generalize it and say he doesn't have a criminal record. I mean, he's got one somewhere else usually. Right, right. I mean, that's just sick. <clears throat> Pasco County School District spokesman Linda Cobb said Dempsey is a site administrator at the place, P-L-A-C-E, after school activity program operated by the school board. So the school board knew what he was. They put him in that position. You know, and as a reward, what did he get? He gets an adopted child, a six-year-old child. This is monstrous. Stop patronizing these things. My God. Sick. <clears throat> it's just, it's yeah, you know, there was that one Indiana story also... Um Oh, let's see. I gotta dig it up again. But uh, uh, let's see. We got the blind school teacher recovered. Uh, so one at St. Mary's College. WSBT.com. Q St. Mary's College peeper waves extradition. And this is you know this is a this is more. This also shows more of the ridiculousness of these imposed borders the attorneys come up with uh, just to basically cash in some more, I guess. Uh, you know, all, all the state lines and lines between countries and stuff, and they're always changing, especially over in Europe, uh, all these quote-unquote separate countries, and they're all on the same continent. Absolutely. Uh, it's... You know, just attorney uh, paperwork menagerie. They don't exist under the public laws, what I'm saying. But this guy, he lives in Niles, Michigan, and they're talking about extraditing to South Indiana. 
Well, they're, they're right next to each other. It's right on the state line. Right. It's not even like 10 miles, is it? Well, I mean, you go from South Bend and you cross the state line and it's Niles, Niles, Michigan. So right. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's like, yeah. Um, but they need funding. So, anyways, we're waiting to hear when 73-year-old David Summerfield of Niles will be brought back to South Bend to face voyeurism and theft charges. Sick. Oh, oh, that's the one that's almost ready to retire. He's 73 years old. Seems like he'd be retired already, but... No, he only spent... Keep reading, because I thought that was so interesting. This poor guy is being cannibalized at his retirement. Right. In an exclusive interview with WSBT News last week, Summerfield admitted to drilling peepholes in the ceiling of the fourth floor Lehman's Woman's Dormitory at St. Mary's College in South Bend. He was also accused of theft for taking women's clothing out of a box in the laundry room at the college. Summerfield says he was only admiring the young women and that his acts were not for sexual pleasure. During his court appearance, he waived extradition and is currently being held in Berrien County Jail. To waive extradition means Summerfield has agreed to go with Indiana authorities willingly, making an extradition hearing unnecessary. Okay, so he's going to cut the attorneys out of that uh, little... Um, right, but, but you can see the, the United Nations right there between Indiana and Michigan. There's not even a county there. But they're facilitating foreign relations with the extradition agreements. That's the treaties between two banks. Right. It's interesting. Because somebody wants to cash in on this. And they're going to take his retirement to, to do that. Yeah, people are not taught to look at these things in this manner. It's, it's good you pointed that out. Uh, so, Sheriff Paul Bailey tells WSBT News... They expect officials from St. Joseph County, Indiana, to pick up Summerfield sometime in the next week and transport him to Indiana to face charges there. He so, can't just walk across the border or anything because they need their money. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just more crazy jester, joker. <coughs> uh, <laughs> attorney work product doctrine really? stuff. Um Let's see, um, well, that's not really attorney work product doctrine, but uh, attorney stuff. Uh, let's see, Summerfield worked at the college for 25 years in the maintenance department, but was let go after a co-worker discovered him looking through the holes. So 25 years sounds like some sort of plateau. Right, it's a retirement. And, and now, oh, had to let you go, so sorry. Oh, now we have to extradite you. And you know he was living in, in Michigan, working at the college, and this is what's occurring. They just want his retirement account. Yeah, it makes him sound like he lives so far away. Well, that's only, you're only talking about um, probably a 10, 15-mile drive. Right. It's just a way of getting out of his retirement. And it's so sad, but, you know, cannibalism happens to only Judas. Judas always hangs himself and commits political suicide, and that's what everybody's witnessing at this time. All of these people charged with embezzlement and clerks and all these people about to retire off of state employed. That's what Judas looks like when he's committing political suicide. That's what political suicide is. Sorry, but you're the fall guy. I'm bigger than you are. It's time for your shakedown. Now, if you want to push back, if you're bigger than me, you know, let's let's go. You get your attorney, I'll get my attorney, and we'll see who wins. And that's the funniest part, is that that attorney is not really his attorney. It's a corporate counsel minion. So no matter what, they're going to get their retirement. Um, if they don't get it through the court process, they'll hurt him, put him in the hospital because he's of that age. Um, they'll do whatever it takes. The IRS will come in to attack him, CPS, adult protection, whatever they need to do to get at those amounts. And that that's, the, that's what's been happening to the citizen for so very long. And now you can see Nazi Germany in full play because they're cutting the overhead. That's a state employee. He's overhead. Well, Hell Wars... Uh, YouTuber out of Canada 
pointed out this story here, the CBC News in Manitoba, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. Lake St. Martin home slated for demolition sold off instead. And let's see. So some condemned buildings slated for demolition at a flood ravaged Lake St. Martin have been sold off. Instead, the federal government has already paid out nearly half of an agreed upon 1.98 million to have 133 buildings torn down. That's just sick. And and they don't use them for to stop homelessness or anything else. All they do is raise people and claim that it's for a charitable purpose. Well, apparently, yeah, he, this guy he sees his house that was. He was told to be condemned, you know, and they were supposed to be compensated, I guess. Which they never got any compensation from the federal government. Just said, "Ah, oh, your home's screwed, you know. I'm going to demolish it." And this contractor just, you know, hauls off and he sells like 20 of these homes instead. And he sees it rolling down the road, and um, you know, it's still got all the stuff in it. And it's just sick. Uh, see, but it appears. A number were moved off the reserve and sold by the band's chief and council. Yeah, the CIA. It's always been the same thing since the 1953 treaty with Korea. That's where the Indian reservations went. That's who you're dealing with. This is your Pyongyang project. And this is how North Korean citizens are treated. They get their houses pulled away on the backs of trucks with all their stuff in them. Unless you stand up and you stop patronizing a fictional government, of course. These are serious allegations, said James Bazan, member of parliament for Schleckirk Interlake, in a press release Thursday afternoon. The two million came from the Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development, AANDC, contract with Lake St. Martin First Nation. Yeah was regional. to demolish the homes because they were contaminated, not to resell them. Yeah, regional. So those are the regional, uh, um, the regions, and you can read about those regions in all of the treaties with all of the Indian tribes. And what happened was everything culminated at the 1953 treaty with the Republic of Korea and the United States. And that's who got all of those tribes. And by that time, if you notice, the tribes are no longer existing. They were already grandfathered out because they've been speckling them with, and I hate to use titles, but they've been speckling them with black and white people too in order to grandfather out the Indian nations. And once those houses are gone and there's nobody inhabiting that place, that's how they take the land back. This, these are just land grabs along with the rest of the Reclamation Acts. Now there was three, um, you know, uh, if you want to say it, three uh, divisions or three three layers. So it started with the Indian nations and the territories and everything, and then they came in with the Federal Housing Acts, and then the National Housing Acts laid over that. And the National National Housing Acts allowed the creation of housing associations and the United Nations holdings and everything else. Well, once they grandfather out the Indian tribe members and there's no Indian blood of course because they've been pushing this uh, affirmative action and racism down your throats and everything oh you are racist if you don't allow white people and black people on the res you guys are racist and they play the same game with everybody else because in their original treaties it says if you don't have a certain amount of Indian blood in you then you're not really an Indian, and so you don't have rights to this land, and that's how they were raising it this whole entire time. And now we're seeing the the end result of these things because once those inhabitants or citizens are gone and they move their houses and raise their houses, burn them down, flood them out, whatever they're going to do, then who gets that land? Congress. Again. And then they can just restart the whole thing over again. They'll just find another bunch of Indians somewhere like they did in, in Australia or East India. You know, this, the Congress is just sick. The shipping and, and uh, commerce and navigation is absolutely horrifying. 
Um, trying to find some information on how they got flooded, because uh, I bet you there's something to that as well. Absolutely. Apparently, there there's an abstract they found from 2011, because uh, there's no mention in that story on how they got flooded. This abstract uh, doesn't say much. It doesn't say anything about how they got flooded here either. Let's try another article. Um, Corps of Engineers, yeah, cloud seeding, whatever it takes, busting through a, a poorly built uh, levee. You know, they did the same thing in in uh, Korea. This, or Katrina, sorry, same thing during uh, Katrina. But Louisiana, I would I would suspect, knowing what I know about guarantee insurance, I would in. in uh, you know, I would suspect that as well here. Absolutely. That's what's going on all over the place. I mean, we, we did that in the documentary for Guarantee Insurance. And you've got insurance agents that burn houses down, that flood you out. You've got risk management on the ground, these sheriff's detectives. There was two more uh, charges this week, too. Well, apparently it was the flood of 2011. The Manit they, it, they gave it a name, the Manitoba Flood of 2011. So. Right. Guess we'll have to look into that more later. Absolutely, um, it's just it's just profound. That's guarantee insurance across the board. Who floods you out? Oh gee, I don't know. I live in Louisiana. Well, the levee's busted because of the Corps of Engineers and <laughs> yeah, they built that thing seeding. below spec. They knew it. Right, cloud seeding it controls the fall of water and bada bing, bada boom. You got a whole bunch of land that you can develop down there. It's not too hard to figure out, people. Well, it is when you've been indoctrinated by the public educational system so long. And fluoridated, poisoned in the mind, uh, given lead paint to eat when you're little people, asbestos in your schools. And, and the, you know what? That was never an accident. That was Dow Chemical Corporation. If you go to any court case, QCIP number, You'll find that Johnson & Johnson is one of your fund management managers on your court case. Everything that happens to you is because of your corporate governance. Who's your corporate governance? Johnson & Johnson, Dow Chemical Corporation, IBM, uh, Geico, uh, Warren Buffett, all of these uh, big wicks that say they're nice and, oh, he's a philanthropist, all right. Read up on his, on his uh, profile. Not Geico, no, yeah, I hate that. Insurance Government Employees Insurance Corporation. Talk about uh, guarantee insurance. Federal employees are guaranteed their income when they burn people's houses down. Flood mountain, kill their babies in mudslides and heels collapsing because of uh, uh, logging. Who did that? legislators in Washington State why would they do that they cash in on it that derivatives medical care now they have to rebuild a whole area darn the luck get some more investors in there developing maintaining those hedge funds guarantee insurance did you see that one with the DA uh, uh, charging that attorney that killed himself over this slip and fall scam. I read it on my show, I think, Wednesday. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember now. That's probably why I heard about it, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a law firm run by one guy who uh, got nabbed for all these slip and fall. They were mostly runners. They were just... Uh, you know, making this stuff happen so they can file these insurance claims. And then, yeah, he got nabbed. Uh, they got, well, like, you know, nailed him on it. And so he committed suicide. Yeah. The rest of them are praying for death. You know, that Geico commercial was playing on a, uh, a headline from CNN. A fatal weight. Veterans languish and die on a VA hospital secret list. It's not interesting that they have a Geico commercial there. Guaranteeing that they're okay. Oh, Geico, yeah. Who cares about our veterans? There's like right? Geico commercials everywhere. They're sick. 
keeping uh, Warren Buffett in the role here, keeping his pockets really fat. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway owns Geico Insurance Company, by the way. At least 40 U.S. veterans died waiting for appointments at Phoenix Veterans Affairs Healthcare System, many of whom were placed on a secret waiting list. The secret list was part of an elaborate scheme designed by Veterans Affairs managers in Phoenix who were trying to hide that 1,400 to 1,600 sick veterans were forced to wait months to see a doctor, according to a recently retired top VA doctor and several high-level sources. That's called guarantee insurance, folks, and these doctors aren't really rolling on anybody. That's what their function is. Their function is to kill you when you come overhead. Veterans are overhead. Yeah. We need to stop this, everybody, because if it's not us, who is it? Because it's them is killing you. The patriarch, the thing you're patronizing is killing you. And laughing about it later. Oh, it was him. No, it was him. No, it was her. It wasn't part of policy or anything. And this has already played out three times before this, two times before this. This is the same story of Nazi Germany, right out of Bolshevik Russia, the same story in Cambodia and Malaysia and Syria, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Greece, everywhere. Now France doesn't get hit a lot and Canada doesn't get hit a lot because they're on basically the uh, New America plan along with China. The new American is all made middle class and made to feel secure, just like the old America was at once upon a time. And as things progress and there's more overhead to a corporation, the corporation starts killing its product off because it can't shelve a human. It doesn't work like that. It can't be slapping on a new paint of coat or coat of paint and making it look brand new. Human beings always eat and do what humans do. They require necessities of life. And when a corporation is so top heavy and paying its officers so much, it has no other option than to start dropping the overhead, which is general average, tossing things over the side of the ship to cut the weight. Yeah, and I guess to uh, try to be, you know, on uh, the top of the totem pole or whatever I don't know we got this one story about a lawsuit this is at the ex Republic cops found nothing in raids so they planted drugs to frame innocent woman now we know this sort of thing has gone on before but here we have uh, this story on it California cops planted drugs in a woman's home to frame her after finding nothing in their illegal search of her home, the lawsuit alleges. Allison Ross has filed a federal lawsuit against the Santa Clara Sheriff's Department Crime Lab and 12 officers that she claims participated in a conspiracy to plant drugs in her house and frame her for a crime she did not commit. Ross was initially charged with being under the influence of methamphetamine, but the case against her was thrown out after the district attorney determined that the police made false statements about Ross's arrest. A uh, related story was called Outraged Judge Throws the Book at Five Cops Who Lied on the Stand, which you probably saw rec recently if you're a news hound. Most shocking of all, Ross's lawsuit alleges that dash cam footage actually recorded the police discussing their plan to plant the drugs inside her house. The incident transpired on New Year's Eve of 2009. Deputies arrested Ross's husband for unspecified reasons while he was at a neighbor's house. Then they came to Ross's home, detained her, and searched the premises. Ross did not permit them to perform the search. And she heard one of the officers tell another that they had not obtained a warrant, according to the courthouse news. Right. And this is corporate counsel directed. Okay, so here's corporate counsel sitting in its county. Here's a victim female and a victim male. Corporate counsel sends out its corporate security officers to falsely arrest somebody such as Rocco. 
Yeah. Okay. The liability for that lays on the law enforcement. So no matter what happens, they write the script. Law enforcement gets in trouble. Corporate counsel's cashing in as they redistribute it. Five law enforcement officials. It's up to twelve, I guess, according okay. to this. Up on to this twelve. Federal lawsuit. Right. Okay. Now this lawsuit, corporate counsel is always cashing in. False arrest, real arrest, pedophilia, killing, murder, uh, rape, suicide, uh, one car accidents. Corporate counsel's cashing in on all of these things, and those law enforcement officers, those detectives, are just given a script on what to say and what to do. And they're taking the fall for corporate counsel, but corporate counsel is the one that's always cashing in on these things. It's time to stop these things. Yeah. Well, we're working on it. Can't uh, do much more than um, finding them guilty of genocide and human trafficking. Uh, well, we are, but... I mean, um, we got to follow it through. It's not like they're going to say, oh, yeah, you caught us. Yeah. They don't do that. I just, so that's uh, the hard part. Right. And it is. Actually, establishing the court was the easy part. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's so, I mean, this is insane. Just insane. So, apparently there's tons of stories out there right now cops conspiring and lying you can see all kinds of stories too more and more at the Cato Institute over uh, police misconduct dot net uh, and this is basically uh, getting rid of overhead absolutely cutting overhead corporate councils redistributing uh, 12 officers according to that story using one female that you know she had to be arrested, but, you know, corporate counsel doesn't view human beings as human beings. They're just objects. The corporate counsel can call out their arrest if that's what is needed to make money for the corporation. Yeah, and they're the fall guys for, you know, if you're cops, if there's any police law enforcement out there listening, then... We're really talking to you more than anybody. Wish we had more of you chime in here and give us your feedback and, and such. But there is uh, not going to be as many law enforcement officers needed under the public law, which we are shifting to as we speak. I mean, this is the pain part of the procedure here and it's just going to be gnashing a teeth uh, like in uh, Revelation uh, there for a while but uh, after the smoke clears we still need law enforcement to enforce the public law it's not, you know we don't need as many because we're not going to be sick and people uh, you know and sicken you people, uh, sicken uh, cops on you people for commercial crimes because right, on human beings. Uh, that 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 that's the whole that's the whole thing. That's the the very difference between the public law and what the attorneys have come up with, with and sold you and got you to lie down to as far as law is there commercial crimes, which some. Uh, which, you know, can find summed up nicely under 27 Code of Federal Regulations 72.11. And it says all crimes are commercial. And that's why you get orders to uh, and quotas, uh, you know, you have to meet, pull so many people over for expired license plates and headlights out and various things like that, which are not a violation of the public law. Public law has to do with harm against a human being, harm against humanity, okay? Public law just says to do no harm. And then if you are found guilty and there's evidence that you have harmed somebody, you can be held accountable no matter who you are under the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. Right. And UCC, Uniform Commercial Code, 
is a commercial patented product. And at this time, as of 2002, that product belongs to the Corporation Service Company. Most people are aware of the IRS Internal Revenue Service, um, but the UCC is actually owned as of 2003. CSC, according to their wiki page, acquired LexisNexis Document Solutions in order to supplement its uniform commercial code comma, secured lending, comma, and motor vehicle services. So this CSC, which is a corporation service company, actually then owns the Department of Licensing and the Department of Transportation as one of its products in order to be facilitating license servicing. Now let that sink in. Uniform Commercial Code is a patented product of a corporation. It is not, quote, law, according to any natural state of being. It's a corporate product, just like um, Barbie and Ken and Play-Doh and Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Uniform Commercial Code is also a product of a corporation. And of course, you know where it stems from. That Originally it was called the Law Merchant, and you can read about the Law Merchant also in Revelation 18. Then right after it was the Law Merchant, it was called the Uniform Negotiable Instruments Acts, which allowed human beings to be commercial paper negotiable instruments and product of the same corporation as long as they were maintaining as fictional entities and as such fictions they're describing themselves as male which is a patented product female which is a patented product of this corporation black a patented product white a patented product Christian a patented product Jew a patented product, Muslim, a patented product, Zion, a patented product, American, a patented product, individual, a patented product. You get where we're going here, folks? It's a corporation. And when you're claiming their patented property, which are called letters patent, then you are going to be tricked out as a product of the corporation because you're claiming to be that product male, female, Christian, Muslim, black, white, red, yellow. If you claim to be that product, you're going to have to pay royalty fees, right? You're not the owner. You only get a small portion of the profits and proceeds off of those patented things as a user or what they call you the tenant in the game of risk which is taking over continents. That about sum it up Bo? Yeah I think you nailed it. Uh so, you know, people want to know when these uh, higher minions are going to start, you know, getting theirs. But it's coming. I mean, we had a corporate council attorney this week. Uh, I covered on the show Wednesday. Sonoma uh, supervisor, county supervisor out in Sonoma. County supervisor. Here's one here I just pulled up. Lewiston, New York, a local judge is facing DW charges following a crash in Lewiston. So he crashed his car. See, New York State Police say a SUV driven by Nagara, Nagara Falls Family Court Magistrate Timothy Cooper collided with another vehicle on the Robert Moses Parkway at Lewiston at 10 p.m. Wednesday night. The driver of the other car was taken to ECMC with minor injuries. Cooper is being charged with DWI moving from a lane unsafely. The 59-year-old is set to appear in Lewiston Court next month. 
He also serves as a town judge in Evans as well. Uh, sick. Just sick. You know, and you know, the corporate council attorneys and the judges are the big guys. There's, there's a lot more of them than there is Congress. Now, Congress sits at top, okay, uh, but look at how they're cannibalizing each other now. Uh, gosh, that one guy just came out and said, yeah, I killed for the Clintons. Uh, We've got some breaking news coming. All right, get that breaking news in here. Absolutely. More judges and attorney surety roundup. Congressman. That clicking sound is just Sorry on your computer. about that. Um, from the observer.com, Congressman Grimm expected to be charged, his lawyer says. Oh, look at that face. Oh, my goodness. He looks surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman Michael Grimm is close to being charged by the U.S. Attorney's Office. His attorney confirmed this afternoon. Mr. Grimm has reportedly been under investigation by the feds in relation to allegations of campaign finance fraud. His former girlfriend was arrested earlier this month. <laughs> There's nothing like shaking down a female to get at the mail. Ah. <laughs> Eve's going to tear him a new one. His attorney called the news, which was first reported by Political, the result of a vendetta against the Republican congressman who represents parts of Staten Island and Brooklyn. Quote, after more than two years of investigation plagued by malicious leaks, violation of grand jury secrecy, and strong-arm tactics, the U.S. Attorney's Office has disclosed its intent to file criminal charges against Congressman Jim. End quote. Mr. Grimm's lawyer, William McGinney, told the Observer in a statement first published by Politico. Quote, we are disappointed by the government's decision, but hardly surprised. From the beginning, the government has pursued a politically driven vendetta against the Congressman Grimm and not an independent search for the truth. Congressman Grimm, Congressman Grimm asserts his innocence of any wrongdoing. End quote. Quote, when the dust settles, he will be vindicated, Mr. McGinley said. Until then, he will continue to serve his constituents with the same dedication and tenacity that has characterized his lifetime of public service as a member of Congress, Marine Corps, combat veteran, and decorated FBI special agent. Yeah, I bet he's done some really good things for Congress. Glad to see another congressman in this shoot. Get in there, shirty. Well, how about this one? Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, state investigators arrested the mayor of Simpsonville on Tuesday, but he said he had no plans to resign. The state law enforcement division filed charges against Perry Eichor on obstruction of justice, intimidation of a court official, juror, witness, and misconduct in office malfeasance, according to the court. Uh, let's see here. SLED said they arrested Icor in connection with implied threats against a municipal court judge. I'm 79 years old. I'm a little old to be threatening anyone, said Icor following Tuesday City's council meeting. Aww. Residents said they were annoyed. The arrest was not even brought up during the meeting. <laughs> they want him crucified. Let him be crucified. Let yeah. him be crucified. Entertainment. Aww, there's a new Jesus. The mayor declined to comment further on the case, citing advice from his attorney. He said he had no plans to, to resign, was unaware of any plans by Governor Nikki Haley to suspend him. Yeah, I bet his attorney's going to take real good care of you at that cognitive judgment. Yeah, especially at that age. Mm. Man, cannibalism really sucks. From fox43.com, uh, Montgomery County attorney charged with rape, assault of a former staff member. <clears throat> he also looks happy in that picture. A Montgomery County lawyer is facing charges after being accused of raping and sexually assaulting a paralegal who worked at his law firm, according to Attorney General Kathleen G. Kane. According to a news release, Robert Curran, 66, of Montgomery County, held a celebratory gathering at a Bluebell restaurant on October 25, 2013, and offered to drive the victim to the King of Prussia Mall because she had been drinking. 
The victim stated that she was capable of walking on her own, but did not want to risk driving and therefore accepted Kern's offer. The charges state that on October 25, 2013, Kearns first drove the victim to the King of Prussia Mall, where he engaged in sexual intercourse with the victim without her consent or knowledge. Well, that's strange. The assault allegedly occurred... Sorry, the assault allegedly continued at the victim's home where Kearns allegedly continued to engage in sexual acts without the victim's consent or knowledge. According to the criminal complaint, the victim woke up on October 26, 2013 in a panic, finding dried vomit on her clothes and finding what she was finding that she was not wearing any pants or underwear. Ah, this is sick. The victim allegedly found bruises and finger marks on the inside of her left thigh, scratch marks on her left thigh, scratches and marks on her right thigh, vaginal soreness, and pain in her spine between the shoulder blades. Kearns is charged with three counts of indecent assault, two counts of aggravated indecent assault, one count of rape, one count of sexual assault, and one count of simple assault. The case will be prosecuted by Deputy Attorney Daniel, General, Daniel Dye of the uh, Office of Attorney General's criminal prosecution section. That's just sick. So now these attorneys are using drugs and stuff to knock people out before they. Uh, that's just foul. I can't imagine what she went through waking up with vomit all over her and. Uh, it's just sick. They need to just hang them up in the town square and let people throw rocks at them. Uh, this one. Here's kind of caught my attention here. The APD killed judge's daughter in third police shooting in the last five weeks. Wow. The officer who shot and killed Mary Hawks was wearing a lapel camera at the time of the shooting, but the APD say that it is not available and refuse to give details. Oh. Of course they do. That's a targeted hit then. I mean, they're... Somebody's saying to the judge, you better shut up. And, uh... The officer that shot and killed Mary Hawks was implicated in the DOJ report for falsifying his testimony about the killing of that, Steve Gomez. See. Now, that's not the judge's daughter, so that's another shooting that he right, and was involved in. Detective, then. This is Albuquerque again. Sick. Albuquerque Police Department have recently come under intense scrutiny... Of course, we all know about that. Uh, DOJ is going after them for the continued pattern of brutality which gained intensity and national recognition after the killing of James Boyd. Another one. That's the third name now. Well, well that goes Sick. back to uh, all, what, there's been like 23. Uh, and it's all called out by the judiciary. Go to the Judiciary Act, everybody. 28 United States Code. Oh, and you'll this. see the, the, the corporate structure. Who calls out what? Department of Justice is under the Attorney General. Now, yeah, there's a little video playing here. And the citizens spoke out against the APD uh, violence at a city council meeting. Well, I can't see what he's saying, but this guy is pissed off. He's just yeah. letting them have it. Yep. Uh, but again, the uh, Albuquerque police are being used as fall guys for the guys pulling their strings. Absolutely. And the uh, murder of this uh, judge's daughter. Yeah, that's This a, is April 22nd, by the way. That's a hit. Th that sounds like a hit, yeah. yeah. So that judge has information. He's probably, you know, he could be anything, including... <laughs> The pedophile, he has information on the local detective or the local corporate council, and so they're they're uh, trying to see who wins here, and that that's what that form of cannibalism is. And, and when people start killing people's kids, it's it's a means to uh, get them to shut up or shooting out their kids, injuring their kids, taking their kids. It's a mechanism used to shut people up that have too much information against another. So everybody wants to watch this one carefully and see who wins. And stop patronizing them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for that story. I had, you know, and, and, and nobody's really gone down yet in the Congress or Senate, but would you say 
Is he, you saw something about Jay Rockefeller the other day wanting to step out? Yeah, somebody was reporting that, but I couldn't ever verify okay, it. Okay, we got to um, verify that. We're still in the midst of verifying these these things. Um, but Lytle was charged. He got nailed for pedophilia this last fall, remember? Oh, the yeah. From uh, Florida. Right. So he's been sentenced, and then there was another attorney doctor that actually got sentenced for murder, and uh, he tried to commit suicide while he was in jail. They saved him up, sewed him right back up, and put him back in there. So, uh, again, that's further evidence of revelation where, you know, the uh, accountable are praying for death, but it doesn't come. They're trying to die, but it's just not happening. Medical industry is keeping them alive and kicking for the Pyongyang project. Yeah, just, you know, I mean, you can see how far their credibility has gone down with the uh, State Department's still trying to uh, get it right on answering what Hillary Clinton accomplished, you know, in her uh, position as, as Secretary of State. Uh, that Jen... Uh, Human trafficking. Oh, what's her name from the State Department with the red hair and the green eyes? She's oh, just, I can't she's, stand it. She's so vile to uh, lis listen to her speak. Yucky. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're still trying to say, well, okay, uh, what did Hillary Clinton did? Uh, do uh. Human trafficking. Yeah, human trafficking. I genocide. can't say that. No genocide. She accomplished mass, mass, mass genocide against the human populace based on the agreements with North Korea based on all of the treaties with every country um, insider trading you know as the Secretary of State and the clearinghouse at the same time she's the one that's handling everybody's birth certificates and counting them up for the Treasury but you'll never hear about that accomplishment Jen Psaki is her name spelled P-S-A-K-I yeah and she just has, when she speaks, she has no emotion. She's got to be a complete psychopath. There's no frontal lobe there, I think, whatsoever. That's why Obama's going on the circuit. He's got to be the face guy there. He's got to put on a pretty presentation because, you know, I, look at what they've done with Hillary now. Way back when they presented her as a female by saying that, you know, Bill was having an affair. And then all of a sudden, I, I'm seeing pictures of her looking grandmotherly and everything else. And then all of a sudden, what happens? Chelsea's pregnant. Hillary's going to be a grandma. Oh, you can't pick on her now. She's grandma. You want to protect her because she's just a grandma. She don't, don't hold her accountable for human trafficking or genocide or being a clearinghouse as the Secretary of State or anything. She's all grandmotherly and stuff. Yeah, that's just what we need, some more uh, Clintons running around on the planet. Oh, yeah, 16 U.S.C. 7. Check out what Bill did in the Preservation Acts. He gave himself a little bit more uh, presidential power in there. Well, here, check this one out. I murdered people for the Clintons, Larry Nichols. Uh, yeah, we know that. And what is this one now? Uh, from 12160.info, uh, they sent me overseas to kill people for them and told me it was for the good of the country. So when they asked me to do it for them in the States, it felt no different. The real truth is, I did it for the money, and I didn't give a shit about the women I beat and the men I murdered. Clintons are bad people, and I did bad things for them. I had to live with that all these years, and now I just don't care anymore. Who knows it? Yeah. Cannibalism. You get them before they get you. Those are the rules. If you don't want to be cannibalized, you might as well hurry up. Time is ticking. And so, but they're still putting up her so far. And Jeb Bush, you know. I mean, that's got to be the most obvious, you know, to show you it's in your face. It's just the same thing over and over again. Put another Clinton or and another Bush to run up against right. each other. Another CIA presentation. You got all the components of a nice, entertaining, valuable presentation put on by the CIA, Congress, the Senate Intelligence Committee. Diane Feinstein is one of the most prolific at that. Flashback on Hillary Clinton's bogus Bosnia sniper fire story. 
Exposed by Cheryl Addison. Uh, that's uh, that's an old story where you know she basically, uh, you know, more lies and propaganda, the whole Benghazi thing. Uh, what difference does that make? Right. Sure. It doesn't mean doesn't make any difference. Nope. To you criminals at the top of the criminal enterprise there. Nope. Just another fall guy. Move along now, everybody. And, well, it's just going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But the more the more bad stuff they do, it's like the more they have to build him up as a good guy. And, and I, I'm horrified to find out what we're going to find out later about Obama because he's on TV and so is his wife so often trying to tell everybody how good they are. Now, if you think about it, that's exactly what an attorney does. If you've ever hired an attorney or gone down to talk to an attorney about a case or anything like that, legal advice from an attorney, uh, they spend 80% of their time, and I've seen this firsthand, they spend like 80% of their time approximately, it's most of their time, trying to tell you how good of an idea it would be to hire them as an attorney and how many good things they've done. Right, right. So... Again, Pitchman. this is just the same kind of mentality in the upper uh, of you know the federal Confederacy government. Pitchman, it would attorneys. Be, it would again. be even better if Obama was up there selling the Floby or something, or going door to door as a used vacuum salesman or used car salesman or something. It's the same presentation, but you know this one looks even more important because he's called the president. Same pitch. Same pitch. I've got some snake oil for you. Special. We'll call that one Obamacare because, you know, I love you. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mr. Obama, I want to get diagnosed for you so I can help offset congressional bankruptcy. And, you know, if I die in the middle medical industry, I guess it's just it's for my country. Absolutely. Why else would it be otherwise than to help Hillary Clinton rise up on that ladder of success? Well, let's see what a few minutes we have remaining here. You have anything to chime in on the uh, most popular topics going on right now, which seems like our uh, UK uh, or um, Ukraine, uh, Kiev. And uh, the Bundy Ranch, of course. Absolutely, and Russia, and all of these other presentations to hide the fact that Americans are under war crimes. They are under fire by their own government. It's hidden under low-intensity conflict within fourth-generation warfare. And if you don't wake up soon, everybody, this happens over again, just like Nazi Germany. It's time to stand and be as one. Stop taking up those... Corporate titles, those entitlements, benefits that come with being a patented product of a corporation. You need to start patronizing your own house and get out of that House of Representatives. I saw an RT video not long ago about, uh, it was the Ukraine military, uh, basically robbed a checkpoint. It was supposedly a civilian... This looks so much like a CIA presentation and actors doing this thing. Because uh, it just seemed obvious to me anyways. Uh, I don't know. But, uh, you know, the people at the, board, the border guards, they were supposedly civilians that had set up their own checkpoint. You know, they were armed and they had supplies. And the Ukraine... Uh, military came through and ransacked their supplies and stuff, right. and they were they were really pissed off, and you know even um, had the cussing in their uh, foreign language and sub captions on right. on uh, RT, except for they, like, you know, use the asterisk for the U and right. And here it's it's just so quiet now. When you register all of your arms and everything else to the NRA, and you belong to all of these groups and clubs and stuff. Law enforcement comes in and does the same thing, shakes you down, takes all your stuff, and charges you with criminal activity. 
although you're preparing for a war. So rather than registering your arms and things, stop registering anything. Anything, yeah. I mean, we talk about all these patriots out there that are you know, so proud they got 50 guns in their arsenal and all this stuff, which, you know, when you advertise that stuff, you're just setting yourself up to get nabbed anyway. Right. But, uh, you know, how many of these people stand up and uh, don't, you know, drive around with driver's licenses or their registrations and uh, don't buy Mary's licenses? I'm sure all those guys in... Uh, the old keepers are still getting Mary's right. licenses and stuff. Right. Is there, there a presentation? <laughs> you know, but they're scared. Well, they, you know, we got the ones at the top that are the leaders that are the presentation. The you know, CIA, uh, CIA. But then the citizens, them. right? And the citizens, what you're doing as a citizen when you join these groups and share all of your information is allowing corporate counsel to know all about you, so they know when to hit you. Yep. That's all you're doing. Stop doing those things. Stop registering. Stop being in these uh, terroristic groups because that's what those are. They've been labeled terroristic terror cells by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Well, those are patented names. So if you look at Tim Turner, he was a shoe. He was there as a presentation. Southern Poverty Law Center does not put anything on their website that would allow them to be sued for putting that information there. So let that sink in. Tim Turner, all of those other CIA presentations. Yeah, who else has been on the Southern Poverty Law Center's right. hit list? Right. And then back channel. Alex Jones. Right. And back channel now, the Southern Poverty Law Center is talking to you, law enforcement and targeting local citizens because of their affiliations with the CIA groups. Now let that sink in. You have to stop and use your own discernment. Stop putting yourself inside of these traps. We're about out of time, Bo. Yeah, I see two minutes left here. Uh, just a reminder for folks, tune in to Tammy's show tomorrow, every Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on freedomslips.com, Revolution Radio. Studio B for leaving the farm. I've been known to stop in there. Uh, also, her uh, other time slot is on Thursdays, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard. And my show, of course, the Bill and Rocco show, which has been mostly, unfortunately, devoid of Rocco for uh, this time period while he's suffering out in McHenry County being held as a prisoner of war. But then my show, uh, I've been carrying on 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Studio A, FreedomSlips.com. On Wednesdays. And remember to support the station. These changing times is Patty's station. She keeps it going even when there's no funding. And if you could give, please give. Uh, you can visit us at our site at www.thesechangingtimes.com. T I M E Z dot Ning dot com. Um, of course. Dot Ning dot info, isn't it? No, dot Ning okay. dot com. Okay. Yeah, and of course, yeah, uh, we're going to go forward as much as possible. We'll be here live every Friday on these changing times, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So. Or more. If we need to do an update, which should be occurring really soon here. Uh, we'll jump on here uh, as soon as it's open lines. And, and, of course, you can hear all of the rest of the hosts on these changing times. We've got Patty on here, and we've got Rav and, and Holy Walker and so many other beautiful hosts 24 hours a day. Um, if we're not live, we're running a, a prior show, and, and you never know what you're going to hear. Uh, we do have the rebroadcast of a lot of Clint Richardson's Corporation Nation also playing on these changing times. And uh, we're growing. Help us grow. We're here because you keep us here. That's right. Okay. Well, we're going to take us out with, uh, you got Double Agent queued up there from uh, Rush or something like that? I did or? that, but I had uh, I Love America. You do that one. Absolutely. Be well, everybody. <laughs>